Hello game. Yeah. We... <laughs> Hello again, Gator <laughs> Ten here. Welcome back to another video. This is update 4.0.2, the newest version of Server Team. Because of this, the major changes that have come along, I'm going to be releasing an entire new series trying to go through everything for the system. This is video one. And video one is going to be going over how to set up the database and the server. And that's it. Just the database and the server. It's all the basics you need to get set up to use all the other stuff. So first off, we're going to start with the server, which I probably should, I was going to use the command, but really the server and the database are the most intensive systems. So what I'd recommend is probably the highest, the highest tier stuff you can find. So you're probably going to need a rack. You'll need a central processing unit, actually. I'm probably just going to need a, oh, not an accelerated. Yeah, I get the, high, the highest tier central processing unit, graphics card tier 3, or if you wanted to combine those and you were in creative, you could go the, for the creative accelerating process unit, process unit. This one only has a tier 2 GPU, unfortunately. Next up, internet cards. Oh, if you're in creative, you want to make sure you get as many as you, of these as you can. I'll go over why in the in a bit. All right. Wireless network cards. You only need one of these for each computer, technically. Um, I would go for eight of the for eight of these, four for each computer, just cause so the server doesn't have any issues and the database doesn't have any issues. You don't need that many. The database you probably do need that many, especially if you're using mine OS. Open OS needs probably a little bit less. It's still good to go for the highest. You definitely need cables, highest tier screen, at least for the database. The database needs a tier 3 screen. The server can go for a tier 2. But a tier 3 is still recommended as usual. Hard disks. If you're going mine OS tier 3, if you're going open OS tier 1. I'm going to be using the OpenOS installation because that's the newest version. And that should be it. That should be it. We'll see in a bit. I wouldn't I wouldn't normally I would normally go use this creative one for testing, but I want to make sure that this is as accurate as possible so we don't put in stuff that you can't. So, you'll need servers. Two server tier 3s. This one goes for that. Memory, four memory channels, CPU, tier three, there, there, there. You'll need a disk drive as well if you're doing this. Perfect. This one's prepared. I'm gonna put this one on the right. All right. Setting up the second one. I'm putting the same amount of stuff in here. Internet cards, wireless network cards, and there we go. That's our second one. This one's going to be on the left. And now we can do that. Keyboard. Doesn't sound. What? Hold on. What sound did that make? That's. What? Uh. I never heard that sound before. That is. Oh. Huh. That is the weirdest sound I have ever heard. Alright. Install both drives. Make sure. This left one is going to be our server, so I am going to make this screen big. There 
go. It's like I'm gonna go big. Just cause. Think of it better. Got well, we have to install the server anyway, so... May as well. Now onto the server setup. Oh, you can see there's nothing on here. This is a clean install. I already removed the OpenOS from here. This one should be good too. This is the server, but we're working on the server first. That's the database, I mean. Eh. Okay. Ah. Now, the only all you need to do to install this is use the wget command. I will put the exact wget into the description below. That's the URL you need the wget in. I'll put the command downstairs. I will put this command into the description below, but there will also be a link to the server team data, the server team GitHub, and there you can find all the files and stuff. So now it should be, now it's installed. You can see all the codes here. So if I run server, that starts with the server. Control Alt C exits the program. And so you got the modules folder, that's where all the modules are usually saved. The settings.txt folder, this is where you can modify the settings of the server. Crypt key, that's the crypt key that you use to change all the, that's what's cri encrypted in. So any if any other crypt key will not show any of the data, it hides anything that's sent over the modem so that if anyone inter intercepts it, they can't use it. Dev mode, you usually never need to change this in the server settings. I would not. That's modified by the database database itself. Database link, this is the your that's the address of the database when you set it up. It will the first time the database sends a message, it will set this equal to that so that if any other computer tries to modify certain settings, it doesn't let them. The port is the modem port that it sends off of, so in order to receive any messages, the other devices have to have the same port. DB settings, this is for certain modules. So certain modules have settings you can edit directly into the in the database. That's where it's all saved on the server. Debug, you usually never have to touch this as well. This is meant, I haven't implemented this at all, but it will display certain information. All right, so you can just leave that on now. Now onto the database. This is pretty much almost as simple as the server. It used to be a little bit more difficult with MineOS, but if you want to do the OpenOS version, which is what we're going to be doing for this video, you just have to go, you have to just grab the same, the boot.lua you have to grab the boot.lua file from the database folder on the github and wget that in, the raw data for that in. So the command for this will also be downstairs. <laughs> the command for this will also be down below. I'm going to have it set to boot.lua. wget-f, that's the URL, boot.lua. There we go. And then you just run this. It installs compatibility library. It installs all of the libraries for the GUI. And that's all. And then it just runs the database first. And you can see right here, by default, anonymous reporting is enabled. If enabled, they will automatically send any crash reports or errors caused by the system or a module to the developer or owner. You can change this in bootconfig.txt file. Installing server teams. So this installs all the server team stuff. The reason for that anonymous reporting is if something goes wrong in the module or stuff, it will send all of that data to the website for developers and myself to see. If any Let's say someone's modules crashed. It saves that data and it sends it to the server so that if that developer goes onto the website, they can view your error and they can fix whatever's wrong with it. 
you this can be disabled too if you don't want it. So here it's recommended that you check crypt key settings and db settings.txt file in the or the apps directory. Currently at default, if the server is set to a different crypt key than this, it will not function and may crash the server. This is a little bit about dated. You can change this in the settings module. So if I press OK, it started this in offline mode. If you want to exit the program, you can go file close. But I'm currently offline, version 4.0.2, dev module. You click that. These are disabled because you're in offline mode, settings. These two buttons are disabled as well as, OK, that one's enabled. We'll leave that off. You never have to touch this unless you are a developer. I will not go over this until I get to the video, how to make a module, which will be one of the last. You could change the port and you could change the crypt key. The crypt key is by default 12345, as I said. It says it's not shown. This is just in case people who you do not want to see go into offline mode and try and see your crypt key. It doesn't show you what it is. If it says not shown, that means it is the default. If in order to change this, you can do three, you can change it like that. And that will always, that will change it to wherever you want. If you put it as empty, it will go back to not shown, then this is default. Port, you can change that as well, just to any four digit number. I left mine as default for both port and crypt key. So I just press submit. All that's saved file to close and it turns off the program in order to turn it back on you turn back on the, the server and you can see all of these files here I don't they should have installed into the lib file but I might have forgotten to change that so they are all here it's a little bit cluttered cluttered I might fix this in the future but it doesn't matter so so much because it's you'll probably not be looking through any of this. But edit to edit settings with boot config, you do edit boot config.txt. Check version is true. This will be modified if any new updates come out. If you want to check version is basically if you want to check for new versions of server team. If a new server version is out and this is true, it will alert you and ask you if you want to install or not, as well as if you want to disable check version in the future. It's so you can keep your system up to date if you want, but I don't need any of that. Lang, this is the Lang file you want to use. This is only available if you're an open OS because mine OS already supports language, but in open OS, you, it doesn't. So if I was to change this to my only other language, Russian, then it would ch choose the Russian lang file. I don't know Russian. I had to use Google Translate. <laughs> I'll leave that. Anonymous reporting, true. If something crashes, it will send this data. If you set it to false, it will not. It will just tell you it hasn't been sent. So I'll leave that as true. Startup params, nothing in here yet version just leave this this is the version of server team currently shut down on exit I'll leave this as false so it's quicker that basically means if the system turns off it turns off the entire computer all right I think that's all oh yeah edit DB settings I don't think you ever have to go into here but this is all that yeah you never have to go into here ah oh, shoot my screen no is that there we go. This is, oh, is good enough. It is not perfect, but you can see the screen, and that's all that matters. All right. I hope that wasn't out the entire time. Um. Yeah. All you need to do to start up a database again is do boot again. This will go through the checks of the version and then all that stuff. And now you're brought to this screen. This is fine. It's because, I mean, it doesn't really matter too much. That's, it's not going to crash the server. But 
the first for the first startup you're not going to know what these are so pre username is pretty easy it's just admin password is pa just the words password all lowercase plus the port so the port is default 1000 so I just add 1000 to the end 1000 and then click submit and you're signed in all right. everything's working if I I'll get to that later so that's how you update the server unless you go to settings and you click auto update that will automatically update the server anytime something's changed in one of the modules and it's prompted but I tend to leave it off because it sends less messages to the server and it's less confusing style this is the style of the database so like if I wanted it to be dark there's only default dot lua which is what this is dark dot lua which is a dark mode that that somebody actually made for me and then there's old dark dot lua which is the old one I made if you happen to like that style more I'm gonna be using dark dot lua this we don't need to touch I'm not gonna touch anything else so that should be all I haven't figured out how to fix that <laughs> but now if I go back dark mode admin password 1000 there we go now we are good all right now we're gonna do edit users we're gonna manage our users to make sure no one else can get onto our system just by knowing the port the first thing you need to do is input the name which for me I'm gonna put Cade my password I'm gonna have I'm just gonna have one two three four for everything I do so I'll add the user you cannot edit passwords once you've input them now this is the most important part you need to do this before you close the database click your user enter in all this will make sure you have all permissions if I am to add, let's add a test one, one, two, three, four, add user. Ah, I finally found the bug. Someone actually said that there is an issue with this a while back and I wasn't able to replicate it, but now I can. That is odd. I'll fix that soon. You need, I'm going to put in all. And Permissions you can find on the, there's a permissions.txt folder, actually there is not one on the server team, but there is one on open security system. So if you were to go to my open security system github, there's a permissions.txt folder which has all of the permissions there are for, for this system plus the security module. So if I am going to add let's do this yes so that adds all modules ex that adds all permissions except for this dev system management we don't want them to have that permission and from for the moment at least and we don't want them to have this permission either so that means they have all permissions except for these two so that should be good I shouldn't need to update the server because I think this is automatic but now if I was to close start this program up again hmm all right let's go to if I tried to go do admin passwords 1000 it doesn't work but if I go do 1234 and I'm gonna run the test one just to show you the permissions in action successfully signed in there we go. If I was to go to the dev module, you can see nothing's enabled in these buttons. That I removed all developer permissions from them, which is why they can't change anything. So it's not really a good showcase of what you can do. <laughs> this is weird. <laughs> I don't know. Mine OS is a little bit less weird when it comes to these first art first artifacts. 
but it doesn't show up in the main database, so that's fine for the moment at least. Paid, one, two, three, four, all permissions, all good. You can, I can see all these users. Perfect. Now we're going to get into installing modules. This is not part of a security update. This is just showing you how to install modules. Simply click developer, manage modules. You'll see I have all three listed here. Move right, move right, move right. I can move whatever I want. But some modules have requirements. You can see there's hashtag, there's percentage sign, and there's at sign. At sign means it downloads files to the server. Percentage sign means it downloads files to the database. Hashtag means it requires another module. You can see that the security module has files that downloads both to the server and the database. The door setup module has requirements, which it requires the security module only. The percentage sign means it only has files downloaded to the database, but has no at sign, so this does not install anything to the server. So sector says everything. If I was to try and move door setup to the right, you can see it removes the security module to the right because it has that requirement. I can move that too. If I was to move the security module back to the left, because these both require it, it moves all three modules. Perfect. For this experiment, I'm only going to be downloading the security module and the door setup. There we go. All files have been downloaded to the server already, so I can just simply start it back up. The server just finished. I can press OK and it goes back to the screen. And I can run this again. Paid. One, two, three, four. I am missing a card writer. That's going to be reporting an error to the server. I'm going to have to <laughs> remove that. That's one thing to remember. You have to have a card writer for the database. As well, as, I mean, you technically don't need it, but a biometric reader in the end. Remember to check the requirements for modules. Otherwise, you're going to be sending random reports to me. <laughs> Probably should have implemented a check for that. All right, there we go. Security module good. Passes. All oh, nice. That might. I don't know what's wrong with that. Oh well. Door set up. Yep. All appears to be working as intended. So that's the basics of getting your system set up from the ground up. I hope you enjoyed. I hope this helped you with. Huh. I hope this helped you with something. And don't go over there. I will see you in the next video, which will should be with the security system. How to install, set up the basic security system. I'll, 
I'll have a layout in the description of how I plan on making these videos. Everything in the description, as I said, and I'll see you in the next video. Goodbye.